Hey everyone, thought I would do something a little bit different and show everyone my guitar rig, my pedals, what I'm using, how I'm running my amp. I've really been enjoying playing my uh, deluxe reverb and a lot of you know that I love the Fractal stuff. I love the uh, Fractal X8 because I just like to be able to put it in a backpack or put it in a laptop bag, put it on stage and it sounds the same every single time. I always go for reliability over something that might sound better, but it might be heavier or bigger and stuff. Um, and I put up a little picture of it the other day and everybody wanted to know um, what pedals I was running or how I ran those pedals. So I figured I would just do a little run through and show everyone how I do it. Here I've got my Fender 52 reissue, but I love it. It's been my go-to and I love the, the nitro paint, how it's all like naturally relicking. So on this, I've got Elixir's 9246 or something. I can never remember that second number. I just know nines. So I used to be playing tens for a long time. And I figured that, I don't know, I was playing a guitar with nines and it was just easier to play. I was doing all the bends easier. And I was just like, okay, well, I'll just go with that. feels better. So I'll just do it. And I haven't noticed any like loss in like body or, or thickness or anything like that. So my deluxe reverb, I have modded it. A friend of mine, Zach Childs from the True Tone Lounge, told me to cut or clip the bright cap. So when I first got this deluxe reverb, I remember putting my pedals straight into the front of the vibrato channel. And I was like, man, my overdrives suck. Why does my Paisley drive sound so crap? And I for the life of me, it was really, I was really disappointed, but it did sound pretty good through the normal channel, but then you don't have the, the reverb and the tremolo and stuff like that. So supposedly, like on the twin reverbs, you've got that bright switch on the vibrato channel and you can switch it off and you can switch it on and stuff like that. But on the deluxe reverbs, you can't switch off the bright channel. It's always on, which means it's got this papery clean sound, which is super nice and twangy and bright but as soon as you put pedals into the front of it, they just go papery thin and it's just not nice. So after a scary half an hour of taking apart my amp, clipped this little tiny little capacitor or whatever you call it, the little green one. I had to be careful not to touch the transformer because everyone was like, don't touch that or you'll die. And I was like, oh, okay. So I cut the bright cap, put it all back on, put my pedals in and it sounded incredible. It's mic'd up with a SM57 into my Apollo Twin with a Neve preamp. I have an EP booster by Exotic Effects on. To be honest, I don't really know what it does, but if I turn it off and back on, And I used to use it for solo boosts. I think it gives it more mid-range. I think it gets a little bit darker. It just sounds bigger. On the amp, I've got no reverb, no tremolo, and I've mic'd it just off, off the cone. Now, the first thing I would put on is the Ego Compressor. How I like to use that Ego Compressor is, I use my ear pretty much, so I want the guitar to sound the same, but I want it to feel nicer to play. So I'm just going to turn it on. Too loud, so I'm going to bring that volume down. Cool, it's got a little bit of a squash there. I find that if I put the tone up on full, it's just a little bit too toppy. Vince Gill told me he always likes to have his tone knob backed off just a small amount. And he also likes to pick on the uh, rounder side of a pick, not the pointy side. He thinks that it has a, a, uh, a less harsh sound. It's very, it's very small, but all these things add up. So if you slowly bring back the treble, you don't want to lose anything, bring, bring back the tone knob. <laughs> See, there's a little bit of like it makes you want to squint. So you bring it down. It's a lot more pleasant. 
with the side of the pick. The Paisley Drive. It's my go-to pedal. I've had it. I've had the ego in the Paisley Drive for a long time. These, I'll always use those pedals, I reckon. I can't find a drive that I like better. So, channel two on the Paisley Drive Deluxe. Um, again, I, I want to keep that amp tone. I want to keep that clarity and that twang. And I don't want it to get fizzy, but I just want to give it some some drive and some aggression, but I don't want to, I don't really want to hear the drive. I want to feel it though. First thing I'll do is make sure that it, the volume is matched because I just like to have all my pedals matched. I don't like there to be a boost in the, in the drive. So as you can see, the gain is quite low and it's probably a little bit dull, and I think that's because I have that mid switch on the side of the pedal switched on. So if I push that back in, that mid boost is gone. It's gone back to uh, what I find more um, transparent. <laughs> Probably needs a little bit more drive. a little bit more drive. That's probably as much gain as I like to use on that on that side. Um, as you can hear, it's breaking up, but it's still totally twangy. So on the right side, channel one, I kind of use that as my distortion. So I know it's it's a, a Nobles um, ODRS or something like that. One of those uh, fuzz-like overdrive pedals. And I find that that really reduces all the transients in the attack, which makes it really nice and smooth. I'm going to turn the volume down. A little bit too trebly. probably stack channel two with channel one. Bit more gain from channel one. Most of the stuff I'm playing in these cover bands and all that is pretty much that's the go-to. It's a nice, pleasant overdrive 
that sits really well in the mix. It's probably not an aggressive metal tone, but it just sits nicely. So, let's see what else I got here. My DD2. I use that particularly for a slapback, 200 to 300 milliseconds. Again, I'm probably getting these numbers wrong because I'm not really that much of a tech guy and I'm just trying to remember what it is. I just kind of use my ears and just turn th these things up. So I'm going to switch on the DD2. See what I've got it set to. So I've just got one repeat. Bit too obnoxious, I think, because it's close mic you can really hear those delays. And I find that that gives you a little bit of a roomy sound. Probably bring that level down a bit. So the reason why I'm being so finicky and in particular with all these things is because this is like the way I would approach my pedal board. The Line 6 M9, I got inspired by Derek Wells to get one of those. And uh, I do have something switched on. I have the, what is it, graphic equalizer. Yeah. So when that's off, sounds like this. mid-range, upper mid-range that I'm not a fan of. Straight into the amp. It's a bit honky. So I drop a bit out of 440 um, hertz and a bit out of 1K. Otherwise everything's the same. So I'll just have that always on. And there is a little slight volume loss from that reduction in... Um, in frequencies. What else have I got on here? Low res delay. So I got an eighth note thing happening there. I like it because it has it has that tape modulation on the end. Or well, the warble, the tape warble. I don't think that's modulation. Um, And because it has a tap tempo, I'm using that all the time, so. And then in the last one, I got reverb. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of reverb. I really do like the slapback. It just seems like a cleaner way to get a reverberation type of sound, a roomier space with the DD2. So if I do have it on, I have a small spring reverb, the 63 spring inside of the, uh, the Line 6. I don't like to use it on the amp because then I can't turn it off. I'd have to walk over to the amp to turn it down and I'd rather have it all in the pedal board in front of me. So that reverb.
quite minimal. What do I got here? Phaser. So I've got a little phaser there for um, some Wayland stuff. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. I just love that kind of swampy sound. a second delay. I think this is a quarter note. If I'm feeling um, atmospheric and I want a longer delay. Sounds great. So that's got modulation on the end of it. just on those last tails. Okay. And one of my favorite effects. And now, a few people have asked me about the drop pedal. So I've only just got that. And when I play um, covers and stuff like that, if I want to tune down, I don't, I pretty much, I don't have time for that. So there's usually like quick changeovers. And I would rather be able to play open chords with, I think it, there's, there may be a slight tone loss. See if you can hear it. sick so that's a semitone lower or a half tone or so now we're going to go down a full step See, that's great. I, I, I'll definitely play that because it feels good. It's the best one that I've ever tried. I've tried the detune type of things on other pedals um, or pitch shifters, and this one just feels the nicest. Um, that goes down. I've never gone to three, four, five, six, seven in those steps down. baritone here. This is so much fun. Okay. 
Uh, all right. Well, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I have changed the speaker in the back of the Deluxe Reverb, the reissue. Changed it from the Jensen to a Celestian Vintage 30. And I did recently change... I removed the V1 and took that out so that the extra voltage can go into channel 2, which is what I'm using. And I replaced it with a new old stock, uh, a Jan 5751. It's a US 86 tube. And that instantly kind of like attenuated it. It took some of the gain away, 20, 30%, which means I could turn it up louder. It was still loud enough, except it was nicer to listen to. It wasn't so scary to turn it up to 10 and it's like, whoa. It was like, turn it up to 10. I'm like, wow, I'm playing on 10. I never thought I could do that without blowing my ears out. So that sounds great. So right now I'm, I'm, I'm at a four. I'm at a four uh, on volume and I probably used to, I used to probably go on two to three, but now I've, I'm turning it up a bit and I've got a bit of a, a nicer, sweeter sound. <laughs> Dunlop um, volume volume pedal there. Um, kind of use that just for lead boosts. It's just nice to have a control by my feet just for volume. Um, I think that's everything. So if you have any questions, please send them through. Um, I know a lot of people just like to watch guitar videos and they just like to see what everyone else is using and how they run their pedals it's always so different and hopefully maybe i run them a little bit differently than you would maybe you've learned something maybe you could teach me what i could do better um it's powered with the the pedal board's powered with the cs12 the true tone um pedal supplier this one is also you can also use it in other countries which is huge because I'm always going to America most years. I can't really take the other one that I had. So this one's just way more versatile and I just love it. Uh, what picks do I use? I've, I used to use the... Uh, I used to love using the uh, 73 millimeter Dunlop Tortex, but lately I've found that, I think it's the material, the hard plastic, like the glossy, compared to the matte, seems a little less spanky. A little, little too, let's see if we can hear the difference. So that was the Dunlop. Now this one's going to be the uh, Ernie Ball Medium. Now the Dunlop. Oh, there's a definite difference there. Yeah, that's huge. Um, they're kind of similar to the Fender, the Fender picks too. Sometimes if I'm feeling like I want to pretend I'm as good as Brent Mason, I can use these Herco picks, little thumb picks. I can't hear the... Uh, what do I do? I'm like... Obviously, I don't really use them very much. Sometimes, if I'm feeling special, then my mate, Mark Di Rosario from Australia, a guitar picker, he gave me this V-pick. This chicken... chicken picker pick. It's like really thick plastic. See what it sounds like. No, 
now let's try the Dunlop. No, it's too dull. See a Dunlop. That's the Ernie ball. It's got this extra grit to it. That's just bright and clear. The V pick. It's a little bit duller. But it still has something that the others don't. So picks make a huge difference. Who would have thought? I never really thought about that. That's enough yapping on for today. Thanks very much for watching. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>